Hey, first graders. So for today's read aloud, we are going to be reading On Kiki's Reef. On Kiki's Reef was written by Carol L. Mauner and illustrated by Trina L. Hunter. It was published by Dawn Publications. A baby green turtle, sea turtle, pops her head out of the sand. It's Kiki. She just hatched from her egg buried deep below. Kiki scrambles across the beach with her brothers and sisters. Birds try to peck them and crabs try to grab them. Some of them never make it to the water, but Kiki does. Surf and spray carry Kiki away. She paddles wildly. The wide open ocean is a big place for a little turtle. She searches for food and hides from big fish that would swallow her up in one bite. Kiki is smart and brave. Kiki paddles helter skelter. Beds of seaweed gives her shelter. After surviving in the open ocean for six birthdays, Kiki is larger. Her shell is brighter. Her flippers are stronger. She's big enough to search for a new home closer to shore. Colors and shapes swirl beneath her in the shallow water. In the water down below, a rainbow of corals puts on a show. It's a coral reef. Corals look like plants, but they're not. They're animals. These are the corals right here. They look like plants, right? But they're not like any animals Kiki has seen before. Some of them look like fans, others look like tubes, and one coral even looks like a brain. Year after year, their hard skeletons build up to make a giant reef, a magical underwater island. Kiki explores. Kiki's birthdays come and go. Kiki's body grows and grows. All the while, she watches the unusual creatures living on the reef. She sees the fish, or she sees fish of all sizes and lots of surprises. Zig, zag, dash in, dart out. A clownfish snuggles into the dangerous tentacles of an anemone. Will it get hurt? No, the clownfish wears a slimy coat to protect it from the anemone's painful sting. Every clownfish has its own anemone, and these two are perfect partners. In and out and all around, lots of teamwork can be found. Kiki discovers some partners for, her, for herself. A gang of tangs. The tangs get a free lunch by eating the algae growing on Kiki's shell. And with, clean, with a clean, smooth shell, Kiki glides through the water with ease. Nearby wrasses are expert cleaners too. Kiki watches them do a wiggly dance that announces, our cleaning station is open. A grouper swims up to the first customer. When a grouper opens wide, the wrasse can clean inside. Not all open mouths on the reef are friendly. The razor sharp teeth of a giant barracuda are deadly for many reef fish. Kiki isn't afraid. She's too big for a barracuda. But she's not too big for an ap approaching tiger shark. Kiki knows so very well a shark's strong jaws can crack her shell.
Kiki makes a quick getaway through the seagrass. When the shark is gone, she'll return to the reef. Meanwhile, a seahorse uses a different strategy to stay safe from predators. Camouflage. The hidden seahorse takes the first prize for wearing this best underwater disguise. See how the seahorse is blending in with its background? Back home on the reef, Kiki hears crunch, crunch, crunch. It's the sound of sharp teeth of a parrotfish, scraping the hard coral for its food. Here's the parrotfish. Every bite of reef it scoops turns to sand when it poops. <laughs> While Kiki snoozes and nighttime creatures, nighttime creatures slither and crawl from their hiding places. A hungry octopus hunts for its dinner. Who will it be? A shrimp or snail or maybe a crab? Whatever eight long arms can grab. Kiki's happily at home on her coral reef. She knows all of the plants and animals, and they all know her and her gentle ways. When a stranger arrives, curious Kiki swims over to investigate. A diver visits this magical place and meets a turtle face to face. Then one day, Kiki feels different inside. Somehow she knows it's time to return to her first home, the beach. She takes off on a journey of hundreds of miles. Along the way, a fishing boat pulls a net through the water. Kiki can't get out of the way in time and she gets caught. Escaping through the net's trap door, luckily Kiki swims towards shore. In the middle of the night, Kiki hauls her heavy body across the same beach where she was born. Using her back flippers like a shovel, she digs a deep nest and lays hundreds of eggs. They'll hatch into baby green sea turtles, just like she did so many years ago. Carefully covering the eggs, Kiki's work is done. She drags herself back into the sea and silently swims away in the moonlight. Along the coast and through the foam, Kiki returns to her reef home. Hmm. I wonder how they know how to get to the same beach that they were born. Hmm. The end.